Oh no, you can't do that. That's not allowed. Jeff will surely step in and stop them, right? Jeff? Hello? With the help of Liz, Kenzie's won! Jeff, no! In 2010, reality TV critic Andrew Dunart leaked a nine-page document on the website Reality Blurred. This document was the Survivor Rulebook, a contract that all castaways must sign before being able to play Survivor. While this document is a bit out of date, it contains some fun insight into Survivor and I've left a link to it in the description. So I thought, why not go over some of the more interesting rules, see what's been broken in the past, and hopefully learn a thing or two. Many of these examples and more can be found on the Survivor Wiki, a place where I spent genuine hours of my childhood. I've left a link to that page in the description as well. Survivor's ready. Go! The very first rule in the document says, clear as day. The contestant will be responsible for paying any taxes on any and all winnings from the show. So guys, pay your taxes. Give 400 grand to Obama and move on. Got it, Richard? Oh. There is a whole rigmarole here where Richard claims Cully was getting fed by production and he caught them and then production agreed to pay his taxes in exchange for his silence. Yeah, I'm not entirely convinced I'm buying that. The IRS certainly didn't. So we're one rule into this document and it's immediately already been broken by the very first winner. While we talk about prize money, the rules also clearly state that people may not conspire to split the prize money in any way. That seems reasonable. I sure hope there isn't a massive unresolved mystery around a certain castaway conspiring to split money with another castaway. That'd be embarrassing. I bet that would still be a mystery to this very day. Let me know if you think Mortgage Gate is real or not in the comments below. In the next section, another rule is that contestants must disclose any medically necessary supplies to production. That makes a lot of sense. Imagine if someone went on the show without disclosing their medical history. That would lead to someone being pulled from the game super early when word inevitably got out. I'm really sad with the tone of the very first episode of the season. But luckily, I don't think anyone is silly enough to do that. So, here's my question. Why did you not tell us? Why did you wait until the last minute? Man, how is Jeff so calm here? A more fun rule is that contestants may only wear pre-approved clothing. You ever wonder why so many contestants wear suit jackets? Production made them. You ever wonder why Cochrane is dressed as the biggest nerd stereotype imaginable? Production made him. You ever wonder why Purple Kelly would wear only a sundress in the Nicaraguan rain and subsequently quit the game due to being freezing cold, leading to her getting the worst edit of all time of being labelled a crybaby quitter McGee? Yeah, I think production may have had something to do with that one as well. Eric alleges that production forced him to wear horrible purple underwear under his shorts in Survivor Karamoan, and it got rid of them in the very first challenge, which subsequently was punished with a bad edit. As someone who almost exclusively owns Pokemon, Nintendo, and Survivor t-shirts, I don't know if any of my clothes is getting past the production pre-approval phase. Here's another one. Contestants are explicitly forbidden from conferring with someone not on their team in any way, shape, or form. So for example, if you went boating, got lost, wandered into the other team, and randomly started asking them for stuff in what is one of the funniest scenes imaginable on Survivor, that's banned. Don't do that. Oh, you want to hold a cool birthday party in the Guatemalan heat? No. Bad tribe. Banned. We've also got this rule. Contestants may only eat flora and fauna designated by production. So that pig scooping killed in the Australian outback? He had to ask production first. Those baby goats that we like to think weren't killed but were apparently caught and killed the second the cameras stopped rolling? Had to ask production first. That breadfruit Dan found to give Rodney on his birthday. Had to ask production first. It doesn't make Survivor any less real, and it's probably for contestant safety, eating a venomous snake would probably also be poisonous. But I do find it fun considering just how much production controls every aspect of what the castaways do, leading to Colby Donaldson's extreme depression in Heroes vs. Villains. Contestants are allowed to bring personal items with them on Survivor, such as clothes or luxury items. Did you know that these can't be taken from you? 
They certainly can't be taken from you and burnt. That'd be ridiculous. That's clearly a rule violation that would lead to a stern talking to. Hidden immunity idols even count as personal items. This makes me really nervous about people who hide their idols in the jungle. If I find someone's idol and I try to claim it, production is going to tell me it's already claimed, right? But that's still insane information to have. You think they just prohibit me from finding it? Call me for a confessional or something? Fun to think about. Another rule is that contestants must consider the ecological impact of everything they do. So I can't imagine burning down a camp would be considered an ecologically responsible thing to do, right? Surely that's... That's gotta be illegal, right? Makes for a cool shot, I guess. Speaking of arson, one of the easiest rules to follow is that you aren't allowed to break the law. Breaking the law is in fact illegal. This applies to both local and US laws. So even though Will was over the legal drinking age in Fiji, he wasn't allowed to drink because America. Will, you know you can't drink beer, right? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> but two castaways have struggled with this in the past. In the Australian outback, Colby took some coral from the Great Barrier Reef as a souvenir for his wonderful time in the stunning location. He even gave it to some of his fellow castaways. Aww, how kind. It's also very illegal and CBS had to pay a $100,000 fine for him doing so. Do you think they knew it was illegal when he did it? Do you think they'd keep it in the episode if they knew it was illegal? I want to say probably not. But Colby isn't the only person to break the law. Let's talk about pooping in the ocean. A common occurrence on Survivor nowadays, one that's even celebrated by some. I did it! Yes! Oh my god, but it was terrifying. But it turns out, you can't do that in France, and they own the Marquesas Islands. So John Carroll pooping in the ocean almost got an entire season of Survivor shut down. Imagine if that's what got Survivor cancelled. I need somebody who who's, has to pee. I need somebody who can pee on my hand. The next section discusses participation. Contestants must participate in challenges and tribal councils. You have to. You gotta participate, there's no way around it. You gotta, if they don't, they might expel you. I'm gonna sit out this one. Phillip's not gonna participate. Nope, not gonna do this one. How come? As a boy, I had an incident uh, in the water and I just feel really uncomfortable with, with this particular challenge. Because you'll be underwater so long? Yeah. All right. Damn, say what you want about Philip, but he is a man of principle, that's for sure. They also say you have to vote for an eligible castaway at Tribal Council. You can refuse to vote, and I used to wonder about doing so strategically as a meme, but they list four possible penalties for this. Ineligible for immunity at the next round, expulsion from the series, expulsion from being a contestant for the rest of the series, any other penalty production sees fit. You know, maybe don't try this as a strategy, seems kinda risky. Interestingly, Pagong voted for Jeff at the first tribal council. That entire first tribal with Pagong was a nightmare. I almost feel bad for Jeff. Almost. Here's a fun rule of clarification that will probably never come into effect. You know how if there's a deadlock they discuss who goes home? Turns out that discussion is two minutes long exactly, and it's actually for who shouldn't go home. You may wonder, well what's the difference? But in a three-way deadlock, you can decide only one person who shouldn't go home during that discussion and then vote again. If there's still a deadlock after two more votes, another two minute discussion is had. I am fiending for the day where we get more than two rounds of voting in a Survivor Tribal Council. It will be so funny. Another one of my favorite rules is that if a contestant is removed, production can in fact decide to replace them with any other contestant. Imagine Nicaragua with Marty and Brenda returning after the double quit. Imagine game changes with Sandra returning after Varna was essentially ejected from the game. They'd never do it, but it would be chaotic, and it would be funny. It is technically allowed in the rules, and I like it very much. But the most bizarre rule of all, a rule that I've kind of been hinting at throughout the video, Section 7. Enforcement of the rules will be at production's sole discretion. Production reserves the right in its sole discretion to change or modify the rules at any point during the series, including without limitations at any point during a particular challenge or tribal council or any other time, 
without limitation. I like to call this the D&D &D rule, or in D&D &D it's known as the rule of cool. If your players are trying to do something cool with the game, yeah sure, just let them do it, rules schmools. Except instead of D&D &D with a bunch of dice flying across the board, it's for a million dollars? Killing a pig without asking? Yeah, it'll make a good shot. Stealing some shoes? It's piracy, baby. Burning someone's socks? What a soundbite, let's do it. Burning that dude's hat one season later? Well, that's just poetic justice. Burying a pair of very expensive alligator shoes? Yeah, that's funny, we'll allow it. Stealing some annoying dude's pink underwear? Yeah, it's fine, we'll just give him a vision of where to find it later. Getting help to stop a beloved underdog from winning the season? We can't have that. That'd be a disaster. That's against the rules, Sophie, you idiot. Let me make it easy for you. There is no helping in this challenge. It was designed as an individual challenge. It'll be played as an individual challenge. If you want Ozzy out of this game, beat him. Get an assistance to stop Maria. Yeah, we hate Maria. We like to think of Survivor as a game, and it is to an extent but it's a game where the rules serve only as suggestions. A game where the winds of production could easily decide your fate. A game where the bank has all the power, and a game where sometimes you steal from the bank and hope you don't get caught. Looking at you, Wu, Tyson, Boston Rob, Culpepper, Alexis, James, Eric. Man, I could make an entire video about people stealing from production, couldn't I? Where was I? All right, Survivor is a game, but it's also a TV show. The rules are merely suggestions. There is only one rule, and it is that you must make an entertaining season of television. And that's not a rule on the players, that's a rule on production. And they'll do anything they can to ensure it happens. Even if it means breaking a few rules. Until next time, I've been Hidden Hitman Survivor, and I'll see you in the courtroom.